Ladies and gents, welcome back to Tandatula. You know, we've been coming up with a few new ideas to try and keep you guys entertained. Um, and you know that we have our sofa safaris, which is long-winded, 20, 25 minute game drive. Sometimes longer, it just depends how many leopards are out there. But uh, what we thought, the idea we came up with was to create a new show that the first name we gave it was Safari Bites, but we decided we've used the name Safari a bit too much. So we went with Bush Bites and we think that's pretty cool. So the idea is, that you know regardless of which guide it is because it'll be me sometimes mr dale jackson we're gonna see if we can get the old bullet back out here it might be chad might be civilized might be scotch all your favorites maybe ginger um and the idea is that we choose a subject and we get three minutes to try and explain to you as much about that subject whether it's a tree like this beautiful guy that i'm going to explain to you in a second or a track or a bird or a or even an impala a lion whatever it might be a sequence of tracks and uh, yeah as i say the golden time limit is three minutes and it's going to be fun to see if we can fill those three minutes if there's way too much information for those three minutes see us try and speed talk or to slow things down every once in a while so yeah welcome to bush bites this is the first episode and i hope you guys enjoy it if there is a particular subject that you would like us to try and cover on one of these then please drop it in the comments below and we will see if we can get to it so for my first subject i've decided to go with my favorite tree it's the leadwood big beautiful tree behind me and this is also my favorite actual individual leadwood here anyway let's start the clock in five four three two one this is the leadwood ladies and gents here's a little branch scientific name is a leadwood or combritum in burbe sorry and in burbe actually means beardless Right, and that's because this plant has no little hairs on it anywhere, okay, which is quite unusual. But yeah, Combritum imberbe, it forms part of the bush willow family. Anyway, the lead wood, as its name would suggest, is a very strong, very dense wood. And I believe the official number is 1,180 kilograms per cubic meter. We all just call it 1,200 kilograms per cubic meter. And that makes a wood that's so strong and so heavy that if you were to try and float it along a river or over a dam, it would just sink. So please don't make your boats out of it. On top of that, in order to make your boat, you would actually probably take a few years just to whittle it down because it is so tough. It's so tough that, in fact, things like termites cannot harvest it. They can't get into it. They can't chew it. They can't you know, take it back to their, their termite mounds for processing. Um, so, yeah, very tough wood. Uh, there's a few places that will claim that it's the heaviest wood on the planet, but it is, in fact, not. I think it's number six or seven. And I think the strongest or heaviest wood on the planet is a species of ironwood. You know, but that's not what I'm covering today. I'm covering a leadwood. Um, the leadwood has a couple of great medicinal uses. Uh, for one, you can use a concoction of the root and the leaf to help you in your fight against bilharzia, if you ever get that. Um, another one or another use is because it's so strong and so hard and so heavy, you can actually use it. That's pretty heavy. Uh, as opposed to using something like steel or iron, you can use it for a hoe for your farmland. So that's what uh, African people um, hundreds of years ago used to do before the discovery of metals uh, came about. So yeah, very tough. Um, and then it also holds a very special place in the Ovambu people of Namibia's heart. Uh, I believe they, they have high respect for this tree. And if they ever come across it, they will actually pay their respects to the tree. They call it the tree of their ancestors. And maybe that's because it is so long lived. And remember I said, about a thousand years these trees can live and that's been proven by carbon dating so the Avambu people will actually come and pay their respects and I believe the main reason for that is you know my opinion maybe because it is so long-lived they believe their ancestors souls are actually within this tree or maybe their ancestors used to look at it and so they should also because it would have been growing that long ago and so they should also pay their respects to it um, the main use for lead wood back in the day would have been uh, for railway sleepers just because the wood is so tough and hard termites can't get into it but because of that, because of the long tracks of, of rail line, um, a lot of these trees were cut down. And so today it's a protected tree. And the only way that you can build yourself a nice, beautiful, lavish bar is by finding reclaimed leadwood to harvest off of old railway lines or old sleepers that you find behind someone's workshop somewhere. And then you can make yourself a big, old, beautiful bar top, kitchen top, or whatever it is. But you cannot just go and harvest this tree. Now, on top of that, things like elephants would love, and I'm getting countdown, to scratch themselves against this tree because it is so strong and it's so rough for the back scratching. And I'm done. Three minutes, ladies and gents. I probably could have gone a little bit more, but I think three minutes is great. It made me talk really quick. I hope you guys could all understand what I was saying. If you have any questions, drop them below. 
And if you have another subject that you would like us to cover, then please let me know. But yeah, thanks for joining us for the first ever episode of Bush Bites. See you at the next one, ladies and gents. I need to breathe. See ya.